Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of test and measurement. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to delve deep into some of the biggest topics in our industry. Today's guest is Dr. Diego Robolino, who has a wealth of experience in the transformer testing industry. He's involved in multiple standards bodies, and today he will be sharing his viewpoint on how to maintain transformer integrity and how to prevent failure. So let's find out what's up with Dr. Diego Robolino. Hi, Dr. Diego. Welcome to the table. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Very excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Darcy. This is amazing. No, absolutely. It's a huge pleasure to have you here. Um, as you may or may not know, we start every podcast episode with something we call the power up. It's three questions just to kind of get your brain working. So are you oh. ready? Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Question number one. Diego, how many standards bodies are you on? Uh, actually, we're working very close with IEEE and with Secret. And uh, as part of the group, we have people working also with IEC, but directly with IEEE and Secret. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your PhD in? Oh, that is a good question. That was done quite a few years ago. <laughs> only, only a couple well, though, surely, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the title of it, Loss of Life. It sounds interesting, it right? It sounds very intense. So it's loss of life of medium voltage and high voltage instrument transformers by thermal accelerated aging. So that was the topic of my dissertation. Bedtime reading, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and where are you currently based, Diego? I'm here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, that's uh, where I'm based. Yeah. Excellent. So we're here today to talk all about the transformer industry. So tell us, what is leading advancement within the transformer industry? I think that leading advancement in transformer technology is basically the new applications and the standard bodies. It's, it's very important the work that uh, the industry is taking now, the new applications, the new technology, the new needs and the new loads in the system that need to be taken care of. And of course, the standard bodies are helping with guides, recommendations, sure. standardization. So that is that is mainly what it is. And you mentioned standards bodies um, in your power up questions. So are there any new uh, publications that we should be aware of or something that's quite interesting that's going on? Well, as I, as I mentioned to you, uh, I work closely with CGRE and IEEE and, and I think that CGRE is one of those sources of information for the entire electrical yeah. industry, power Absolute industry. Absolute wealth of knowledge, right? A wealth of knowledge, experts from all over the world. You know, it's 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 amazing the work that they do. And these working groups have generated quite a few documents. I, I, I want to highlight two, at least this time, the technical brochure 642 related to transformer reliability and the technical brochure 812 related to the advances in swift frequency response analysis. There's much more, right? There's sure. there's many things that have come out in the last couple of years, uh, many things related to insulation, dielectric fluid, and testing of power transformers. On the other hand, we have to talk about IEEE and IEC, uh, especially IEEE with the Transformers Committee. They are working continuously on advanced technologies and revisions of dissolved gas analysis uh, guides. Uh, SFRA, field testing, and I, I just want to mention that in 2018, the first guide for dielectric frequency response or frequency domain spectroscopy was published by the IEEE Transformers Committee. So a very interesting document, and as I mentioned before, these standard bodies generate standards, guides, and best practices, I would say recommendations mm -hmm. for industry pr practitioners. So we spoke a little bit before this podcast, actually, about um, that cause of failure is related a lot to transformer components. So out of those kind of components, which is the most sensitive? You know, it's difficult to pinpoint at one specific component, you know, even though the statistical analysis shows that mainly insulation, windings, uh, unload top changers, and I would say bushings are the main components that may cause failure of the power transformer. But everything is related to loading conditions. Everything is related right. to operation. Everything is related on how do we look after the life of this transformer, right? How do we operate this transformer? Mm -hmm. And that's mainly it, right? How yeah. do we analyze and, and how reliable is the data that we get out of it? Yeah, for sure. And how would you define or like confirm integrity of a transformer? Wow. 
integrity is is is, is a strong word, it is right? A strong it, word, it, and it, I'm it, it's use a it. long word <laughs> <laughs> because integrity has to be taken care of from day zero. When you start designing this power transformer, when you go into the mechanical, mm -hmm. the dielectric, the electromagnetic, and the thermal characteristics of this transformer. It's the whole and view, isn't it, really? You're taking into account. Absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot leave, you know, little points outside of your equation. Everything has to be in. And uh, the responsibility of the design is not just on the designer, on the engineer who's designing this transformer. It's on the end user who has to provide specifics about the activity, the work that this transformer will be performing in the field. So this, this is part of it. Uh, of course, you need to look into well-defined load forecasting mm -hmm. because this transformer is going to be installed today, but it's going to be working in the field for the next yeah. 10, 20, 30 Maybe years. Maybe even 50 years, some of them. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and now you're talking about 50 years. There's quite a few units that have been already for 50, 60 years mm -hmm. in the field. And, uh, you know, electric, dielectric testing, offline, online technologies have to be incorporated into something that we call now the health index. So integrity might be now looked as a, an indicator, right, based on offline and online testing techniques. Mm -hmm. You spoke earlier about um, the IEEE and IEC and kind of the standards bodies and the work that they're doing. Do you think that there is um, that their technical viewpoints are coming to, into synchronization? I love the word synchronization, and I think that the other word is globalization. Yes, absolutely, right? yeah. So we, we are a, a one community. For so long, we, we've had different standards kind of overlapping, kind of, kind of saying the same with the different words. And especially IEC and IEEE are trying to synchronize efforts and are trying to, to have one single document with both logos basically, yeah. trying to have the same recommendations, the same guidelines for the entire community. So yeah, there's there's big work from yeah. both sides trying to synchronize many things now. Yeah, yes. both working towards the same goals to make sure that everybody has the same viewpoints when it comes to what does integrity you know, and asset management really mean for transformers? Absolutely, so absolutely. Where does testing come into that conversation? You know, testing is... Uh, it's, it's an essential part of mm. it. And, and maybe I can explain you a little bit around a simple example. Please right? do, yes. So during normal operation, a power or a distribution transformer is subject to a variety of external factors, ambient factors, environmental factors, that may or may not affect the integrity of this transformer. One of the things that will happen at a certain point is that you're going to have a transient or a sudden fault, and all the energy that is being released internally in this transformer may change the shape of your transformer internally. When you look at your transformer in a substation, you can look only the outside. Yeah. You can actually, well, I would love to be able to take an x-ray and just look like inside. see right inside. See inside, exactly, When right? the technology comes to do it, I'll let you know, Diego. <laughs> okay, please, 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 I'll put that on my list. Uh, because absolutely, things may change internally. How do we see that, right? And, you know, Oil testing is one of those things that is just amazing because you can take a sample and, and you can analyze yeah. dissolved gas. You can analyze the physical chemical properties of that dielectric fluid. And from there, you can make some interesting It's like a blood test for a transformer like a in a way, test. isn't it? You're yeah. absolutely right. You're comparing, you're making an, a, a perfect analogy here, mm -hmm. right? So when you take this information and you start analyzing, you may decide what kind of testing or what kind of maintenance work needs to be done. So... Uh, simple technologies like power factor testing and capacitance, we look into geometrical changes in, the, in this winding or what we call the core coil assembly. Okay. Um, short circuit impedance, right? Exactly, the same, the same functionality. But if you want to go into more advanced techniques, you will look into swift frequency response analysis to look exactly where the, the, the winding or the core coil assembly has been changed mm -hmm. is there any deformation or is there, there's a fault condition ultimately for you this is just all about doing the most to prevent failure i guess um so given this is your area of expertise can you give us a recommendation of how people can safely operate their transformers well i think that generally speaking you need to be proactive right absolutely and minimize being reactive uh, 
just imagine anyone <clears throat> hates to have a midnight call, right? Taking you out of your bed and running <laughs> to a substation in the middle of a rain or whatever that is. You know, factors will be that will stop the operation of a transformer. Yes, but you don't want it just to fail because you missed something during your testing practices, during your maintenance scope of work. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to clearly identify your priorities, if you really want to elevate the efficiency of the transformer system, right, of the operation, you need to look into well-designed diagnostics and maintenance plans based on asset condition and predictive analysis. I think that that is the best way to go. Make sure that your transformer is operating according to the specifications. I feel like this is one of those topics that we could just dive so deeply and there is so much to it, um, but we are almost out of time. So could you just recommend us any resources or anywhere we could go to get a bit more information about? Well, about absolutely. If you look into the standards, right? Oh, perfect. As, yeah. as I mentioned before, secret documentation, technical brochures, fantastic information. IEEE, IEC have literature design for operators, uh, how to do this, how to test, how to install, how to commission, um, how to design, right? Mm. How, how to look at the reality of the field, where you want to run your transformer. That's exactly um, the important thing for you, right? And I, I would say it's, it's not only looking into the standards, not only reading those. I invite everyone attending this podcast and, and listening to this to engage with those standard bodies, right? To be part of those, to volunteer. You know, it's a little bit of extra work, but it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, and, and you get to know people with lots of knowledge. Uh, I invite you guys to participate in different conferences all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have Secret Session in Paris pretty soon by yeah. the end of August. We have PowerCon in Malaysia. We have Secret GCC in the Middle East. Um, we have the Electrical Insulation Conference now in uh, Tennessee. Yeah. So many good things for you to read and participate. God, that sounds like there's so many ways that people can share their expertise. And I just want to thank you, Dr. Absolutely. Diego Robolino, for coming and doing that with thank us you, today. Darcy. I really thank appreciate you, it. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.